three. Hey everyone, it's Dodger once again, and I'm joined once again by Canterbury Egg. We are What's doing that? another um, sort of commentary slash heckling of uh, this time round <laughs> three of Grand Prix Rome. Um, it's between our very own Canterbury Egg versus McGuffin. Egg is playing a blue green Concord list um, based around the best Concord card released in the new rotation, which is shockingly not from the Concord set. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, McGuffin is playing Bogles, um, so we already know who we uh, are rooting against. <laughs> <laughs> Bogles, the enemy. Uh, yeah, so uh, right off the bat, um, how did you feel coming into this match of Egg, and what did you think were your key cards? Uh, so this is a matchup where you can kind of just get spiked. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what Bogles does. Um, really, my key cards are ramping into the Scion of Torrent so that I can manage the auras a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, the 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 J Vaults out of the out of the board. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go ahead and see if we're getting into the game right now. So McGuffin has Mulligan to five, notably. Um, I think. I saw both those hands kind of offhandedly, and they both didn't look great, so it kind of makes sense to me. Um, yeah, the first hand one. had just one land and couldn't cast any of the creatures. I didn't see him, too, but... I think the second hand was also one land, so seems reasonable. Um, yeah, you hate to see it. So Fable's Attend is weird here, because, like, it doesn't really read like it's a Bogle, but, like, in reality, it kind of just is, because whatever creature you're putting all your stuff onto is naturally going to have the highest power. Um, and your hand seems kind of nuts. I mean, like, I guess you could do without a second Savnay's Autumn, but you have the Scion of Torrents and you have a Sights Beyond to go with, like, literally any non-enchantment permanent. Yeah, drawing into the Scion made it, uh, I think, increased my win percentage quite a bit there. Mm -hmm. Turn 2 Golden Touch on Fabulous End is good, though, because now McGuffin has a 4-4 Lifelinker with Hexproof. Um... Ooh, Orion is a good draw here, actually. Yeah, I think you're going to get to watch me completely mismanage my Orion encounters a little later. <laughs> so the awkward part here is if you decide to cast Sights Beyond first, you're going to miss a counter on Orion, assuming you're playing it this turn. Because um, you need to you need to play another land uh, instead of Orion here to cast the Sadness on him, which is what's happening. Yeah. I wonder if it's better to... Actually, no, I think playing Shifting Glade here is probably fine. Um, okay, so Savnay's on him, draws a Warded Tome. So you're going to play the Elraine here, sure. Yeah. So I, I think I basically you're, you're, trading, you're trading away the ability to get one counter on Elraine for the ability to scry before you draw. Which yeah, much. seems like it might be fine. I'd have to do the math, but like... It's yeah. It seems like defensible at the very least. Although yeah, since you yeah, had another land to play, I might be a little more dubious. Like, sorry, you already you already had another land to play with with the seven eight autumn, so I might be a little more dubious about that choice. But these are kind of like micro points. Yeah, I think really my plan was just to get the scion in play, and I wanted to scry so that I didn't draw anything dead because I wanted some way to deal with another aura. Luckily mm -hmm. now I know that McGuffin never had another aura. I think if I were MacGuffin, I would have cast the Floor Acolyte on turn two, because you don't have to really be worried about you um, not like having your removal spell for the for the Acolyte. Yeah, I think I you're probably know. right. I guess MacGuffin just wanted to try to raise me down. Like, you are clocking here, but also, if your opponent played a kind is devoted on turn one, like, they're not actually that far behind you. Um, and, like... So you just drew the Seismic Colossus, which is actually castable here, um, if you want to. Yes, I guess you could just true. play the Warded Tome first. Although, I imagine you're probably just going to go for the Scion of Torrents. Yeah, I just Scion away the Flora Acolyte here. Yeah, that seems fine because you if you if you sign away the Golden Touch, then you're giving him a free card. Um, yeah, and like that's, that's what my thought was. you're basically you're taxing uh, them for two the mana. Flora. You're taxing them for two mana either way, but like one of the taxes actually gives them a free card, so like that kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, he didn't follow up Flora Acolyte with another aura last turn, so mm -hmm. I figured that you know, I mean, nothing too 
too devastating was going to happen this turn. Well, so it kind of depends on... Like, okay, this is kind of unlikely, but, like, say MacGuffin kept um, an Ethereal Fervor in his hand instead of casting... Um, instead of casting the... Or, like, sorry. MacGuffin, say MacGuffin cast Floor Acolyte and kept uh, Ethereal Fervor in, in his hand instead of casting it, right? That means you're actually, like, you have to sack the, tor the Scion here, which could end up going poorly for you. So, like, that's the one other consideration... But like, yeah, that is true. I think it's fair for you to be like, nah, he doesn't have it because like, if he didn't go turn two floor acolyte, he's not going to go turn three four floor acolyte with an aura still in hand, you know? Yeah, like that doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, like, MacGuffin just has to be like, well, shit, here's my <laughs> same two drop. <laughs> I guess I lose to any land or to any to any island. Right? Yeah, like, which I, mean... I do, do draw here. Oh, okay. So, always lucky, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a fetch. Okay. I yeah, mean, that's I probably just GG, leave... right? I do leave this untapped. Do you leave and one untapped? I'll explain why. I leave the, the fetch land untapped. Um, so, you want to do an instant here... speed? Was just to have it up instant speed. Uh, don't mm. lock me out. I don't understand why. It's a little dubious. Uh, I wasn't really tracking cards in hand at this point. I was just like thinking, what's the worst possible thing that could happen? And I didn't have to tap out here. You know, if you played an aura. I think you got I, one I more L Ray encounter than. Oh no, you tapped three lands, never mind. Yeah, the fact that you can gain five life here is fine. I feel like if it were me, I would have just kept putting the Acolyte on top of his deck, because, like, you know he bricked on Auras already. Like, you don't have to... Like, there's no reason to let him draw another card. Yeah. I, I think I can't really lose either way, but oh, I, I mean, you can't. Yeah, to put the, like, put the Acolyte back here. It's, it's, it's nice to... Um, it, it feels nice to have this in the back pocket, but I actually think you just... Like, you just don't need to. You can... Because you can... If you fetch on your turn, you can even play a Sights Beyond. Yeah, that's true. Um, but again, like, this is very, like... It, it basically doesn't matter, because the game's already locked up. And McGuffin bricks by drawing another land anyway, so, like, whatever. Um. <laughs> so I assume what might happen this turn is you attack with the Colossus, and McGuffin tries to double block, and then you put back one of... Uh, you put back the aura and then make up and cries. Something like that. Yeah, I think I actually start by just islanding the floor acolyte to the top because I drew one. Oh, yeah. Whatever. I don't really understand why McGuffin like, wouldn't play the attendant in hand. Like, is he trying to represent more auras? I'm not really sure. Because he doesn't have any instance uh, main deck, so at this point he's functionally at sixth. Oh, the Sabne, the Sabne flip. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, this is just super overkill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have lethal here, right? Why aren't you just swinging for lethal? You know, that's a good question. Because <laughs> you can just, you can just, uh, oh no, never mind. Because the, you can't actually top the attendant because it, because it has some, yeah. Yeah, I, oh no, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah. I, I mean, you could just, think I would like you could just kill the, the golden touch here so that he can't gain life, but. Yeah, at this point, I was just like, you know, not. I feel like you're probably just mentally games. checked out. Like, oh, I won the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moving around the sideboarding, basically. Yeah. Because I know what he's drawing. Yeah, I mean, if I'm a governor, I just scoop here, right? Like, you're honestly, yeah, you probably just that. scoop to the side of Torrens. <laughs> Knowing what's in your hand, like you're never drawing a new card for the rest of the game. Or like as soon as, as soon as the second island comes down. All right. Um, so before we go into game two, I guess we can talk about what the sideboard options here. So first, let's talk about what you sideboarded and why, and then I'll talk about what McGuffin, like what I would expect McGuffin to sideboard. Yeah. So I think I only sideboarded in three cards here. Mm -hmm. um, I sideboarded in the two J Ball Reclaimers, obviously, because sure. they're the best card in the matchup. 
Um, then I brought in the fourth Snowfield Mother. Yeah, because I agree with the, that. The the race. I actually ended up taking out, I believe, three sites beyond, uh, mm-hmm. because the value engine definitely didn't seem helpful on the draw, and I, I needed to be interacting as early as I possibly could. Yeah, I could so see I that feeling too slow. Back anything that didn't have a mana dork. Yeah, I could see that feeling too slow. Um, it it does help you dig for like your jade vaults and stuff. Um, I think maybe you side out like one Sabne's autumn along with that, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I could see siding out a Sabne's autumn. I could see siding out some number of rookies. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's just a little slow. Yeah, I think like Ward of Tome is obviously worse than Slides Beyond, but I don't think you can afford to side it out because you need the you need to be able to cast Seismic Colossus in a timely manner. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that's awkward. But, um, so if I'm McGuffin, I'm looking here. I think Titan Snare is a no-brainer. Yeah, uh, I know that comes in. Being able to just blank, like, most of your win conditions is pretty huge. Um, and, like, uh, I think out-of-body experience seems all right. Like, I, I don't know McGuffin's deck well enough to know if you should expect to goldfish uh to goldfish like them down before um they drop their haymakers but if that's not the case then you actually need this um yeah. imperial claim doesn't really do that much like you're not winning the game from these things and like exiling their sites beyond or the sabna's autumn after they already like basically cantripped is not really gonna help you that much even if it turns off the concord so um, yeah, every now and then you can kind of gotcha a Seismic Colossus, but... Yeah, but, like, I think you just have out-of-body experience, which does that better. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, if I'm McGuffin, I'd probably bring in Titan Snare and maybe out-of-body experience, but also, with this is a deck where you can't afford to sideboard too many things, or else your deck kind of loses its identity and just doesn't, like, work as an overall package anymore, so um, it's interesting. Yeah, I know that Titan Snare and Out of Body Experience both come in okay. in some number. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know what comes out. Yeah. Maybe even Hanaru's Courage. Hanaru's Courage feels like a concession to try to fight against Edix and stuff. So yeah, I could see that yeah. being pretty useless here. Um, Probably that and a couple of the Boggles. Makes sense. All right. Um, let's go ahead and. Get started. Okay, I just hit play. I don't know if you... Yeah, it's okay. Cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll warn you ahead of time. This game is not interesting. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's look at McGuffin's starting hand. Interesting. So... Pocket says I'm about to be logged out due to inactivity. <laughs> yeah, Pitch, I'm literally out. watching replays. What do you want from me? <laughs> okay, so McGuffin's got a pretty solid hand. Two lands, a bogle, and then just a bunch of auras, including an ethereal armor. Um, I kind of feel like that has to spell doom for you, but... <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. well, you'll see. You do have ramp and a sign of torrents, so... Uh, maybe. Maybe. It's sort of awkward that you have to fetch for a shifting blade here. Or, like, you don't have to, but, like, kind of feels like you should. Yeah, I fetched for just a forest here because yeah. every point could matter. And mm-hmm. I have the treasures for the. Uh, yeah, I think that's defensible. Item. I don't I don't really hate that. I think if I. I may decide. I may have decided to do that too if I were you. Because this is actually turn three sign up torrents, right? Because you can just go. Turn two, two Elvish Opportunists, um, play the tap Lumbering Hillock, and then turn turn three. You actually have six mana. Yes, this is a turn three Scion of Torrents. So Impish Delights comes down here, Cantrips. Ethereal Armor. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. So this Fade Bless Attendant now has five power. Oof. Spooky. Yes, very. <laughs> Give me just a sec. Oh, oh no, yeah, we're going to have to wait for you to go AFK. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of this very exciting game of Magic, I go AFK for about a minute. Mm. Uh, 
Yeah, so I think um, based on, I mean, like, obviously I know that there's a game three, so, like, <laughs> we know what's going to happen this game, but um, okay, wait, it looks like you're going to come back. Nope. All right. <laughs> back on the uh, yeah, I think that I think that this Bogles deck is interesting. Okay, so you just took five. Um, yeah. I think going in the future, like this is definitely an archetype that has legs, and it also has room for experimentation. So it's not like this is necessarily the optimal version of the deck. Um, which you know, like I think means that in the future we may see people needing to react to this by either running more more tweepers or more um, edicts. Okay, so it looks yeah. like you drew it to Mio, which seems like a kind of mediocre draw. Yeah, I mean, Tamiyo is great if I stabilize. But yeah. first I have to stabilize, and I'm currently not. So the good news is you have two random jump blockers you can throw out. Bad news yeah. is uh, McGovern has a flying aura in hand. Yeah. Uh, McGovern this. just forgot to remove a counter from the high priorities, which is... Uh, Oh, that's true. Game loss. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I guess you actually won. We should go tell the judge. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see that it turns out not to matter. I mean, I'm sure you'll die in the next couple turns, but... <laughs> I will die in the next to this turn. Wait, right now? Seriously? I get, I get turn three. Oh yeah. my god, wait. So there's a Impish Delights. Ethereal Armor. Oh, yeah, that's all... Hell of a lot of damage. Followed by Sky Kaiser's yep. aura. You you might uh might count this as exactly thirteen. Uh let me six see. from the Ethereal five six. from the Ethereal armor. Yeah, six, five plus one from the Sky Kaiser's aura. And then one for the Fable yeah. and Space yeah. Power. Oof. <laughs> yeah, bug was pretty good. Yeah, here McGuffin says, wait, I realize that you could possibly have counter spells, but I'm just like, bringing in counter spells seems like a, a terrible idea in this matchup. It's not the worst idea I've ever heard, but it's a pretty bad one. The, the real issue is that I have to dilute my deck a lot. Like, I have to dilute my Concord. And they don't, they and... don't save you if, like, they're already getting beaten down. They're pretty much only good if your opponent stumbles, so, like, not really the thing. Yeah, like, sacking my two treasures here to counter the Skycaster's aura does not put me in a favorable position, really. I mean, it lets you survive for a couple turns, and then Sion yeah, Fox locks out their draw survive, side. Like, but... although actually you can't cast Sion turns because you sack the treasures, so like, yeah, yeah. either way you're probably just fucked. Cool, alright. Very cool. Yeah, <laughs> Thank so you, I went Mana Dork into two treasures and then died to <laughs> Sweet. I guess I shouldn't have fetched, I don't know. Like that's just that's just boggles, you know. At least it's not happening from one card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh should we Okay, let's go ahead and start game three now. Alright. This one uh this one goes a little longer than that last one. It does not end on turn three. Yeah, you can tell from the extremely long bar at the bottom. Okay, so we got you with a terrible opening hand. The yeah. second opening hand is weak, but fine, I guess. Yeah, Day I balls is pretty big. Well. Interesting. I, I think that this hand is just... Like, if I don't hit Concord, I have three dead cards. I mean, you're mulliganing getting one of the classes. Well, yeah, two dead cards. So, like... But... Yeah, I feel like... I feel like you're probably right that this isn't enough. But I'm also not sure how likely you are to get a five that's better. Yeah, well, I, I think I'm pretty likely to get a 5 that's better, because I'm pretty likely to get a 5 that doesn't have three seismic colossus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how likely are you to get a 5 with a castable Jade Vault Reclaimer? That's true. So McGuffin's Ooh, got right. 7. Um, with what looks like a pretty solid hand. I mean, you got a, a Castle Vogel, you got... A Titan Snare, which will shut off your big haymakers. Okay, you've got yeah, you know, out of body no, experience. no white mana. That's true, um, but you know, ambitious delights, cantrips. You have a vocal. Like, I think you're you're definitely fine keeping this hand. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so 
This is a pretty solid five. Yeah, you got... I'm assuming you're sending back the Colossus here, but... Uh, I can't remember if I sent back Colossus or Ruchi. I feel like Ruchi's better. I mean, like, if you draw Word of Tome, Colossus is better, but otherwise... We're gonna find out. Oh, yeah, okay. I sent back the Ruchi. Mm, uh, I think so... that's Troll, personally. Well, I think the Colossus can help me race... Uh, I'm on the play, so I got a couple looks at some good cards. Yeah, I, don't, and... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say troll, but I don't like it. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. I also think since you know your opponent is rolling Titan Snare, like you can't really necessarily rely on that alone. And I'd rather have stuff to like help me stabilize. And Ruchi also gets you more mana, so. Um... Yeah, that's definitely fair. Uh, oh, I remember why I threw it back. My issue is because I knew that. Um, a turn two Ruji could just easily die to uh, to an attack. If they Golden Touch? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Ooh, Sound Eyes on him, uh, plus um, Snowfield Mother means you're kind of set, though. It's yeah, super awkward it if McGuffin really goes turn two Titan Snare, and then you just cast No Mom, and you're like, ha. Huh. <laughs> nice hate it card, loser. Super awkward. I think and that's that what's about to happen here. What happens. Yeah. And the awkward part is, like, MacGuffin has to cast this, or, like, he risks getting Scioned. So, like, this is the correct yeah. play, but you still get punished anyway. Feels bad. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the early game in this one isn't particularly interesting. It gets very interesting down the line, though, so... Yeah, it's weird, because, like, Snow Mom by herself is enough to stabilize, right? But it's not enough to, like, necessarily close out the game. Um, yeah. It's so, really like, bad into uh, Golden Touch, because... Yeah. It's like, okay, there's one damage, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Tamiya draw is good. Tamiya is really bad. Yeah, Tamiya is definitely good here. Um... Because it'll give me a chance to stabilize, or to to draw after I've stabilized with yeah. the Snowfield Mother. Um, okay, so there's Snow Mom coming out. I think I agree with you that Snow Mom's better here. If you play Tamiyo and draw some cards, she's probably going to die. If you play Tamiyo and untap land, she could still die. Might as well just get the blocker in there first. Yeah. Okay, so drawing another Ethereal Fervor. It's pretty bad. Um, so McGuffin really had, just has to hope that he finds a white source soon. Yeah, he does find a white source soon, but it's not this turn. Okay, so I guess he just casts the aura, right? Like the Skycaster's aura, and then start hitting face. Yep, yeah. and that's what happens. I just get bopped for four. Yeah, so, so like, if you're McGuffin, I think you're starting to feel nervous. Um, because if you don't find another white source, you could splutter out, but... Yeah, but like if you do, and... if you do, there's a pretty decent chance that McGuffin can just race this game down. Um, land here is a good draw because you're gonna be, you're gonna be drawing a bunch of cards with Tamiyo, so you need more mana to play those cards. Yep. So just slam the Tamiyo down, sure. Yep, slam the Tamiyo and a minus two just to, you know, casually draw four. I wonder if it would have been better to cast Tamiyo off the Kindness Devoted, just in case you draw an El Rayan. Yeah, that's um, possible. That's kind of not that big a deal, though. Okay, so these cards are mostly nothing. Ruchi can get <laughs> yeah. rid. Of, Ruchi can get rid of the flying, which is kind of neat. Um, okay, discarding fetch. Sure. We got him actually down to twelve, which means he dies in three hits. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're going here. Sure. Okay, right, I'm kind of racing. Yeah, I mean, you would be you would be like easily winning this game if the Titan Snare wasn't out though, because like next turn you cast Seismic Colossus and um, although I guess my Gunman could just theoretically out of body it. Ooh, the Jade Vault's a great draw. Yeah. Oh, there's a White Source. Um, we're about, okay. We're about to see a series of really interesting lines from both players, so I, I'm I'm going to default to you to do the commentary because I played them. Okay. But I'll. Sure. I was thinking once you've reacted. So I think if you're MacGuffin, Ethereal Fervor isn't correct here because you're going to be leaving one mana unused. Um, the correct play is just Ambish Delights 
probably after sh uh, shuffling, and then Golden Touch. Um, this gives you like plus seven damage, I think, and puts you down to eight. Um, I don't think attacking the Tamiyo is correct in this case because, like, if you're putting the onus on your opponent to deal with your threat now, um, whereas if you hit the Tamiyo, then like you're giving them another turn. Um, if you're yeah. fair, it does let you untap the Fabless Attendant, so if you're worried about, like, getting raced down somehow, then, like, you can untap it for blocking, but if you just cast Golden Touch, you gain, like, a million life, so, um, I don't really think that line holds up to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're about to see the line that you suggested, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's 10, not 11. Uh, there's no there's no black, there. there's no black, you're right. Ethereal armor is a good draw, although I still think Golden Touch is the play. Yeah, just use your mana. <sighs> yep. So that's what's worth noting now um, that I didn't know while I was playing, obviously, uh, is that it's four white cards in hand for McGuff and one white source. That is awkward, yeah. Um, it means that you're kind of just. Maybe it means that the correct play is actually to draw before fetching. Maybe. Although that's obviously a very minor thing. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to yell at us for the deck thinning argument. I mean, people, people like, I mean, Pip gets angry about it, but like also it's, it's not like it, it is a slight advantage that if you continuously do those things um, in the correct order, depending on whether or not you want to draw land, like you will win more games. Over a long period yes, of time, which is why I always try to do it. Okay, so island here. Um, so you have six mana. You can cast both Ruchi and Jade Bolt. If you wanted to just like nuke two enchantments, um, I think I'd be more inclined to nuke the Golden Touch, like to destroy the Golden Touch rather than put it back in McGuffin's deck. So, like, you yeah. also have a Tamiyo here, which you can either cash in for, like, a cool... It depends on if you play a Ruchi first, but you can cash in for a cool, like, four to five cards. Um, or, if you want to keep it around, you can untap land and get some extra mana. Yeah, so, what's going through my mind here is a couple of things. Um, one of them is that... I... There is this the tip to me, I think. Um, I believe I end up untapping a land here because mm -hmm. my, my play is either Jade Vault and Ruchi or Jade Vault to leave up Jade Vault. So you do have Sabne's Autumn available here as well. Yes, Jade Vault means... leaves up Jade Vault and Sabne. And you can, actually, you can actually flip it completely mana neutral. Actually, you can flip it mana positive. Or no, you already play Land's turn. So you, you can flip it mana positive if you plus to Mio. Um, yeah. But you can, it's mana neutral otherwise, which I think is a play you should probably make. Yeah, I agree. Um, after I didn't, I realized that I should have. Oh, okay. Uh, I think yeah. this turn I would have increased my win percentage a lot by flipping Sabne. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. Um, so Tamiyo plus... I think this is fine as long as you just Sabne's first. Like, there's pretty much no reason not to, but yeah. Yeah, uh, so I uh, I made a pretty poor play <laughs> here. With when the Scry? I or... yeah. With the Scry, I see Scion of Torrance and Jade Vault Reclaimer. Ooh, and okay. I think to myself, ooh, Scion of Torrance seems sweet, because I can just start bouncing all of these auras, and I have an island in hand, and I forgot there was a Titan Snare in play. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> and so I put the Scion on the top. Theoretically, you can Ruchi away the Titan Snare. Yeah, I could root you away the Titan Snare. I could even Jade Bolt the Titan Snare. So there's a lot of yeah. different options. Yeah, those lines don't really become relevant until, like, you've stabilized and or if you actually flip the Sabne's Autumn here. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, as we already stated, was a misplay. So Jade Bolt here, um, you have to kill something because you're just going to die. Like, you, you can't afford to kill the Titan Snare. So oh, yeah, I'm guessing you kill the Golden Touch, but, like, you can also kill the Skycaster's Aura and just hope MacGuffin doesn't have another one. 
Actually, yeah. I think I think killing this guy has his aura makes more sense because like you could die to like another golden touch or like an, an ethereal armor or something. Yeah, okay. Kiss, killing this guy has aura makes sense here. Yeah, that's what I do because it leaves up a couple of like yeah. acceptable costs. It means like McGovern's um, gonna gain another chunk of life. Um, but I think it's you can just kind of have to deal with that. Are yeah, my with last the kind of Toby play comes up next turn. I don't yeah, like attacking so... with the mother here. You're not going to outrace right now. Um, and I don't want, like... Oh, I guess you can block with Jade Vault and sec it in response. Or yeah, second which is what I do. Okay, that seems fine to me. Yeah, that seems fine. Like, if you wanted to play Ruchi, you could you could play Ruchi and jump with no mom, but, like, that's defensible. I think McCoppin also forgot to change Fableless to a 9-5. Uh, yeah, he, he fixes yeah. that during this turn. Okay. Tranquil I think he first changes it to nine seven. Sure, so that's kind of like a whatever draw. Um, I think so. Uh, this is weird. Ethereal Fervor is such a strange card. Yeah, it is. Like, even if you look at the art, it doesn't really appear to be like depicting anything besides, like, a landscape. And then you see there's, like, this random, like, like, dusky red guy flying in the top <laughs> of the art, which I actually did not notice until just now. Yeah, same. <laughs> I guess he's the one with the ethereal fervor. Supposedly. So, is this supposed to be a 9-7? No, it's nine supposed five. to be a 9-5. He picks okay. his So... I kind of have to imagine you just cast the Ethereal Fervor and, like, get in there, right? Yeah, I think that's probably what he should have done. Oh, I think he ends up going for the Ethereal Armor here. I don't really see, the like, the benefit to doing that. It's not like you need that extra mana for anything. And Fervor is just more damage, right? Uh, yes. Because it gets two R's instead of one. Plus it, plus it lets you untap your thing uh, at any time, which is kind of big. Um, It's actually kind of nice that this Tranquil aesthetic was drawn, because, like, it's not as good as drawing a white land, but it does mean that this extra, like, random mana from the Weathered Oasis can actually go to use. Um... Which has been like kind of an issue that McGuffin just hasn't been able to spend all of his mana every turn for the past like three or four turns. Yeah, so I believe. Well, getting ahead of the recording a little bit. Um, I know Ethereal Armor gets played here. Mm -hmm. So once that happens, then my line is my plan is just at this point is hold up J Fault Reclaimer. Uh, I'm dead to two more Skycaster's auras, but I'm dead to those anyways. Yeah. Um, so I was yeah, it seems like to move to combat, and then this, this does seem like the safest end. line because it, it, I agree. Like, I didn't think about how if um, your opponent has another Skycaster's aura, if you play the Ruchi, you just die. Um, yeah. So like, I actually like that you're playing a little safer here. I wouldn't. I didn't think about that before. Okay, so armor. Yeah, a lot of my plays... A lot of my plays came from what if they have another Skycaster's aura. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. So another yeah, aura I still here. Should have put the on him. What's that? I still should have flipped the Sobnez on him. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so how big is this thing now? It is a 13 9. Nice. Yes. It's <laughs> large. I like how this card has all these different, like, abilities on it, like, it's only Hexproof for your biggest thing, and, like, it can move counters, but, like, no, it's Slippery Mogul. <laughs> yeah, it's straight up just Slippery Mogul. <laughs> okay, so... I assume we're gonna see this... We're gonna see the Jade Vault line. Yep. Um, I think you destroy Golden Touch here, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Like, Ethereal Armor is more stats, but Lifelink feels like a lot more relevant to me. 
I spent a little bit of time thinking about if I could afford to uh, hit the Titan Snare because I knew I was drawing my Scion of Torrents. Yeah, I actually kind of... I wonder if that would have been the right choice because, like, I actually, I actually like, I like hitting the Titan Snare here. Yeah, I, I, I thought about it, but I just, I didn't have the context of what was in my opponent's hand. I didn't want to accidentally play into something that I wasn't thinking of. Like, what if they have another Titan Snare or something? Like, that, that could feel pretty bad. Yeah, like if they just say post combat play Titan Snare. Like at the very like, and also I think. Cyan Torrance doesn't actually stop the Golden Touch because uh, it, like, they still have the Golden Touch, so like, I kind of get where you're coming from with that. Um, yeah. And turning off all this free life your opponent gets is like pretty big deal. Um, okay, so it's now an 8-4. I believe that's the correct stats. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so while, while, we're, while we're just kind of watching things dirtle, um, I have a question for you. Sure. Your turn before this... McGuffin put me down from 19 to 9, but yeah. left Tamiyo in play. Do you think that's the right play? Yeah, I talked about that, actually. Um, I think that's the right play, because, um, yeah, Tamiyo can represent another, like, three or four cards, right? But, like, mm -hmm. I think that if you attack Tamiyo, you're, you're still giving your opponent, like, extra turns to actually stabilize the board. Um... And I think what what lets you stabilize isn't cards, but mana. Yeah. Um, because it's, your deck already hard. draws, it, your deck already draws so many cards. I think like it's better to say, okay, you have to have an answer now. If you don't, you die. You know, then being like, oh, okay, well you can't draw any more cards next turn, but like, um, but if you, uh, but like, sorry, you you can't draw any more cards next turn, but also if you don't have an answer. You still get another turn to develop your mana, and then like potentially come up with another answer on the following turn. You know? Yeah. And I think it depends. Speaking like, of... it's a very like. See, now this is happening because you had the answer, um, in your hand. But like MacGuffin doesn't know that. And like if, if you do have the answer in your hand, right? It would have been better to to kill the Timio. But if they do have the answer in their hand, like that's kind of that's kind of the risk of playing this deck. The mogul stack, and you, your job is kind of to force your opponent to have it. Mm, that's true. Okay, so anyway, Tamiya draws a bajillion cards as usual. Um, so we're seeing Jade Vault Reclaimer number two coming out, which is obviously really big here. Yeah, and basically just the same line as last turn for me is Jade Vault the best aura, and then leave it up as a blocker. Hmm. I think that's fine since you still have another use of it to kill the Titan Snare. Um. And like, so you still have Jade Vault available to um, like potentially deal with an annoying thing. I still think yeah. like this turn you still still should have flipped the Sabne's Autumn because it's it's mana neutral to do so, and it also means yeah. you can deck for an extra four, or you can just have an indestructible uh, blocker. <laughs> yeah, you'll see that I um inadvertently gotcha McGuffin here in a second, but oh how what happens? Well, my thought was to leave up both Jade Vault Reclaimer and Sabine's Autumn. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, you'll get to watch what happens. But you're right that I should have flipped Sabine's Autumn both the turn before this and the last turn. I don't I understand. Just... How is MacGuffin even going to get gotcha <laughs> I don't even understand how it's possible. I also don't understand why MacGuffin didn't cast the Tranquil Aesthetic last turn. Yeah, I don't know why McGuffin didn't cast the Tranquil Aesthetic either. Like, you don't have Sweet Face. I, I don't think it adds a ton of... I mean, it doesn't It doesn't really matter that much, but, like, use your mana efficiently. Like, you, this Chump Blocker can can save you the game because you're being raced down by a 4-4. I, like, I don't know. That just seems... It seems, like, not well thought out to me. Yeah, I agree. Um, worth noting that I have Ruchi to also deal with the Titan Snare. Which True. means yeah. that I'll, I'd be able to, you know, play Ruchi, kill the Titan Snare, and then play Seismic Colossus. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously a lot easier if you have the Zombies, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep going back to that. I think I casted a game earlier where 6KJ was playing, 
Uh, and he didn't. He just didn't play his mana static on turn one. <laughs> like when he had an untapped land, and I like I lambasted him for it the rest of the game. <laughs> while <it was> coming <laughs> out. Okay, so we're seeing tranquil static here coming out. Sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure why this came out main phase. Yeah, when... it shouldn't come out post uh, pre combat. Um, ethereal fervor doesn't give haste, right? Yes, there's no reason to like no. play an ethereal fervor it. Uh, this is weird. I don't know what's about to happen. Seems like there's a bit more thinking too. Yeah. Mm. Um, there's there's some discussion at the end of the game, which I think is chewing up a bit of this recording. Oh, okay. So this game's gonna end soon, is what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I was accidentally misplaying around, by the way, yeah. was the Ubi being held up because I just wasn't clocking that there was only one white mana on the other side. Oh, so you were playing around out of body experience? So I was factoring in out of body experience in my plays when it was, you know, green, blue, red being held up, just because I wasn't paying attention. Well, if it's on your turn, then like, yeah, that makes sense. But like, if you're worried about them casting it on their turn, they could also just draw a white land. So, although maybe, yeah, okay. So if you're over here, sure. Are you seeing the gotcha? Oh, he's just going to attack and get blocked by the Sabnes, isn't he? Yeah. Oh. It's rough. So his his 9-1 first strike is just about to Papega into the... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's like a car crash. I can't look away. <laughs> oh. It's happening. Now, granted, I was in a pretty good position here anyway. Oh, you you were winning this game, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think this line really mattered. Well, maybe not 100%, but you were probably winning this game. I think it's hard for them yeah. to beat double J Vault Reclaimer if they don't have, like, Flora Acolyte or something. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, I don't know. Oof, McGuffin with the fuck in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be me too if that happened. Rough. <laughs> All yours, come off. <laughs> oh, mate. I mean, as a magic player, you love to see the boggle just die. But oh, I mean, yeah. I I think if you have if you have a soul, you should be happy to see that play. But if you don't, then I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, now I mean, you have a billion mana. Um, it's pretty yeah, simple to go. Ruchi, Titan Snare. Oh, yeah. I mean... Oh, he's straight up down on board. Yeah. I forgot yeah, Sabine has an activated ability. <laughs> <laughs> Sabine is pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps underplayed, one might say. <laughs> Perhaps underplayed, indeed. Uh, technically wouldn't have been dead on board if he had two Tranquil Aesthetics in play. True. Um, Should have played it the turn four, like I said. But that did not really put him in a particularly favorable spot. <laughs> the funny part is, after he cast the the ethereal fervor, he actually had no choice but to run it down <laughs> with yep. his kind. As soon as he it cast makes you it, have to. Like, oh, <laughs> oh man, it's rough. Yeah, and he was talking a little bit after game about how he should have played the Ethereal for his second main. Mm -hmm. But, like, I could just flip Sabne freely and then untap with a billion mana. And, yeah, I mean, Sabne like, should have been flipped and... two turns before, though. <laughs> 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 Although, I guess, like, <laughs> instead of, like instead you were able to mind control McGuffin into inting his guy in there. <laughs> uh, so, I guess, never mind. Shut up, Dodger. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to tilt my opponent. That was my plan. Oh, man. It's rough. Tilt my opponent on the last turn of the game when I don't think the decision even mattered. Yeah. Oof. All right. Well, uh, it was an interesting match. I think it's I think it's nice that we saw, like, literally a blue-green deck actually able to fight back against Bogles, which makes me a little less scared of the deck because blue-green seem like the colors that are least able to deal with Bogles. Yeah, um, I was, you know, staring longingly at the Bessie's bruise in my board, just like, come on, can't I just kill a Bogle with this? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 
Turns out that Cyanotar does a pretty good job game one if you can get it out on turn three, and if you're not already dead. Wait, are you telling me that Cyan of Torrens is a good card? <laughs> that is a controversial take. <laughs> yes, this is my uh, my five pepper opinion for this video. <laughs> Cyan of Torrens, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to do like just. I know we did that one podcast one time where we talked about like the underrated cards that are insanely broken and should mm -hmm. be seeing more play. I feel like I just want to I just want to do a, a podcast on like underplayed cards. And that could be cards that are really powerful, but there could also be cards that should see a little bit of play and see no play. You know? Or like a medium amount of play yeah, and sure. see like a little play. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um We um we did a podcast actually a while back that was like our hot takes from MSEM. I remember but that most one. Most of us yeah. thought the hot take villain is not that good. Was um, that you? But one of my hot takes, everyone, basically. Who had the but hot take that Mana Mazes are too good? I feel like that person was a savant. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Caillou actually mentioned that. Yeah, Caillou, big brain. But my, my one hot take that didn't make the video was that Scion of Torrance was obscene and way underplayed. I mean, we just ran out of time for it. But... That was that was when Cyan could could top lands, right? That was when Cyan could top <laughs> yeah, lands. Yeah, fuck that. And still no one was playing it. Even the current Cyan also just destroys people. Yeah, even, it does. Even in, okay, even in the game in the finals of like GP whatever, where where Kevin was playing against Ruben, uh, I think it was Oakland, mm -hmm. and Kevin played Cyan into an empty board and then had to put it self on top of his library <laughs> he still almost won that game <laughs> oh that's brutal <laughs> like, i don't know that that card is that's really good <laughs> yeah i i remember going in one of my league ma matches back when it could still top lands it was turn one mana aesthetic into turn two mobile yeah. Into turn three, sigh on your land, and I was on the play, and so it oh, was, back when Mabel uh, was two was three mana, good times. Yeah, back when Mabel was three mana. Oh no! And so my opponent untapped with one land, and I had Mabel and uh, Scion and like five lands in play, and that's when we decided this is probably not okay. So my fa my uh, quote unquote favorite Scion Torrance memory was I was playing against well one that damn Pipsqueak. <laughs> uh, who was playing a certain pod light deck. And Pipsqueak has um has Sin Yun, Master of Self, and Sign of Torrents in play. Oh god. Thankfully she she played the Scion and then played the Sun Yun after that. Um and like I was also insanely ahead on the board. So I felt pretty good about my chances to win the game. All I had to do was kill the Scion and swing lethal, right? Uh -huh. So I cast my Rumble Spall and Scion. Pipsqueak responds with Lazare's Conjuring X equals 5. <laughs> <laughs> and is like, put all 5 of your permanents and 5 of your lands on top of your deck. <laughs> my turn? <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's a good beat, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that was rough. Yeah. Anyway, I you went on to, to lose that game. Yes, I I think. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, the conclusion for this match is Sign of Torrent's good. Uh, Bogle's somewhat scary, although if you run like the right Incidental Hate, you can you can get by it. Um, also, watch out for instant speed God activation triggers. All right. Yeah, uh, I mean, we saw game two just how scary Boggles can be. Yeah, but... straight up turn three kill. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, thanks for everyone. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, see you next time.